Hello everyone, and today we'll be talking about mining engineering salaries. So if you ever thought about choosing a career in mining engineering and you're wondering how much they make, then this is the right video for you. So this graph I have here, it's uh, all based in Canadian dollars and from the report in 2020. And all these figures you show you see here on the left, these are all the base salaries, okay? Um, so there's additional forms of compensation that I will also talk later on. And if you're wondering where these numbers came from, uh, I have sh it shown here in the bottom left, it came from the Hayes Recruitment Report. Okay, so let's just get right into it. Um, at the very top, um, that's the highest salaries, and then the very bottom, roughly ranked highest to lowest. So at the top, we have the Janu general manager, and the general manager can make anywhere from 155k to 250k. And again, this is all just base salary. And what a general manager is in charge of is essentially the entire mine site. So not just the mine, but it could also be the plant as well. And if there's any exploration, then the general manager will be in charge of everything that's on there. And so one below that is the mine manager. And the difference is that the mine manager is only responsible for looking after the mine. So this could include the technical group. So that's the engineers, the operations group, maintenance group, and etc. Uh, but the mine manager wouldn't look after things such as the plant side, which the general manager would. And so because of that, uh, with less responsibility, the mine manager can make anywhere from 150k to 210k and in terms of the years of experience required to reach these roles uh, it largely depends on the mine site that you're at if you're at a bigger mine then you probably require more years of experience probably at least 15 to 20 years of experience and if you're at a smaller site you can maybe even get there with just 10 years of experience again it really depends on which mine you're working at uh, one below that, we have the manager of technical services. So this would be the person that's in charge of all the engineering and maintenance work, for example. And this person can expect to make anywhere up from 150 to 210k. One below that, we have the superintendent who makes 120 to 170k. So the superintendent is more on the operation side and that person will be in charge of all the operators in the field. So you don't necessarily need a technical degree, which is why the salaries is a little bit lower on the starting end, but uh, you can make a little bit higher. And after that, we have the engineering manager who makes 165K to 200K. And the engineering manager, as the name says, is in charge of all the engineers. Um, and because there's different engineering groups, there's the mining engineering, the mechanical engineering, and the electrical engineering. Uh, you can be, I guess there's multiple different ways that you can reach this path. And that person can make 165 to 200K. So a very nice salary. And same as the other managerial position, you would typically need at least 10 years to get to this position for a smaller company. And if it's a larger company, you may require even more. Next below that, we have the chief engineer who makes 140 to 160K. And the chief engineer is the highest technical authority on all technical decisions. Um, this person would have the most experience out of all the engineers and possibly even more experience than the engineering manager. But uh, this, if you are going to the chief engineer position, you would mainly just look after the technical aspects of the operation and you wouldn't necessarily have a large group of subordinates to look after. And from that, you can make 140K to 160K. And so the difference between an engineering manager and a chief engineer is just that the engineering manager would have a larger group of people to look after and typically requires better leadership skills than a chief engineer would. And one below that, we have the senior mine engineer who makes 120K to 135K. 
And just reaching this position also depends on the years of experience that you have and depends on what size of mine you're working at. If you're at a smaller mine, maybe you can reach this after five to seven years. Uh, for bigger mines, maybe seven years plus. And then the one below that, we have the mine engineer who makes 80 to 110K as a base salary. And the mine engineer typically requires at least four years to reach this position. And then EITs can make anywhere from 60 to 80K. It's not mentioned here, but this is something that I know from experience. And one below that, we have the mine technician who makes 55K to 85K. So EITs are different than mine technicians in that EITs require a four-year bachelor degree, whereas the mine technician won't typically won't require that. Uh, they probably just have a diploma or maybe even no degree, and they probably do more hands-on work than the engineers. So they make 55 to 85K. And then after all of this, we have the mechanical and electrical engineers. So the mechanical engineers make 80 to 120K and they can look after a variety of different things. It could be looking after the mining equipment, which is the trucks and shovels and dozers, figuring out a maintenance schedule for them, or they could be working on the plant side and looking after that. So similar to the mining engineers, mechanical engineers require typically four years of experience and as well the professional designation to reach this status. The senior mechanical engineers require five to seven years of experience and they can be expected to make 110 to 140k. For the electrical engineers, they make 80 to 120k and similar to the mechanical engineers, they can look after the electrical systems on mining equipment or on the plant side as well. And senior electrical engineers, 110 to 140K. And again, this is also typically requires five to seven years of experience. And lastly, we have the ventilation engineers who look after the ventilation underground. And because this is only for underground positions, you typically won't see this on open pit mines and they can make 80k to 120k and so all of these salaries are in canadian dollars and while you could just directly convert them to say us dollars or australian dollars what we typically see is that um, the composition actually varies quite differently in terms of the overall package i seem to find that the australian counterparts they pay a higher base salary but less on the additional compensation whereas the Canadian salaries are a bit lower than the Australian counterparts but they have more in the additional compensations so there's multiple types of additional compensation and you may not get all of these depending on which company you work for the location that you're working in the type of commodity that you're working at the how the company is performing, how your indiv individual performance is, uh, the commodity price, market conditions. So there's a lot of things that can affect your additional compensation. So first off, we have bonus. And this can vary depending on all those things I just mentioned. But if you want a rough figure, you can assume 5 to 15% of your base salary. Next up, we have stock units. So stock units are typically reserved for those who are in the higher level positions, such as managers and above, or for those who are performing exceptionally well, you can expect to see stock units in, as part of your compensation package. For remote living allowance, this depends on your company that you're working for, but some companies will give you an extra bonus for living in remote places. And after that, we have the Northern Living Allowance. This one is just specific to Canada, as far as I know. 
but the government of Canada will actually pay you $55 or $110 per day. If you are living in a northern area, that's also remote. And for example, I'm living in Fort McMurray. Uh, so I'm entitled to $55 per day each day that I'm living here in Fort Mac. And there's also places if you're even more remote than Fort Mac, then you'll be eligible for $110 per day. Some companies will also give out relocation assistance. So that's just the uh, initial lump sum of money to help you relocate to a different area. And some companies also provide housing assistance. So this is the longer term uh, assistance that would say, for example, pay for a portion or all of your rent or provide you some financial help for providing a down payment. I could also uh, include overtime. Some companies pay overtime and some positions do pay you overtime and some doesn't. And this really largely depends on the company that you're working for and how their compensation is structured. But if you're an operator, then you can make really good money working overtime, for example. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.